There are at least three key events in the establishment of the church. We have Christmas, the birth of Christ. We have Easter, the crucifixion and the resurrection of Christ. And then we have Pentecost, the coming of the Holy Spirit on all believers. Now, John the Baptist prophesied that Jesus would at one time baptize believers with the Holy Spirit and with fire. He affirms this, Jesus does, to the apostles just before his crucifixion in John 14, 26. Right before his return to heaven, he tells the disciples to remain, to wait in Jerusalem for the promised gift of the Holy Spirit. And from this, they would receive the power to be his witnesses to the very ends of the earth. Now, the dating of Pentecost is one of the most wonderful examples of typology and fulfillment that we'll find in all of Scripture. Pentecost means 50, and it's actually 50 days after the first fruits offering. The Feast of First Fruits occurred on the day after the Jewish Sabbath of the Passover week. That would be a Sunday for us. Pentecost, then, was the day after the seventh Sabbath following Passover week, the 50th day after the first fruits offering. Leviticus 23 explains how all those dates are decided. Here we have just a tremendous example of the inner canonical connection between the Old and the New Testaments. The Passover feast, first fruits offering, and then Pentecost. The fulfillment of these events is striking. Jesus died on the Friday of Passover week was buried hastily before sunset because the Jewish Sabbath was about to begin. His body remained in a borrowed tomb throughout the Sabbath. Then the day after the Sabbath, which is Sunday for us, the priest offers or makes the first fruits offering in the temple. Christ arose from the dead on the day of first fruits offering. Paul says Jesus is the first fruits of them who have fallen asleep. After Jesus' ascension to heaven, the men, they, they returned to Jerusalem just as he told them to do. They joined together in prayer in an upper room. And then, on the day of Pentecost, just as promised, the sound of a rushing wind filled the room. Tongues of fire came to rest on each of them, and all of them were filled with the Holy Spirit. They were given extraordinary power to communicate the gospel to those around them. The disciples, they didn't stay in the room basking in God's glory, but they burst out to tell the world. This was the beginning of the church. And without the coming of the Holy Spirit, that would not have happened. Absolutely amazing. Over the next several weeks, we're going to take a close look at the significance of Pentecost and the resulting works of the Holy Spirit in the life of every believer, in the lives of you and me. I hope you will join me for those times. Blessings to you.